We have heard the song or heard the story once already in story and in song. It's a story that we keep coming back to hear year after year. So I invite us now to listen again to hear the story from Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of Bethlehem. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place in the guest room. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into, he gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Friends, the shepherds returned then, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. This is our holy story, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This feels like a cozy scene, doesn't it? It's a very familiar story for those of us who show up here year after year to hear it again. Maybe it feels cozy because this time of year, for many of us, is wrapped in warm memories from Christmas's past. Maybe it feels cozy because the manger scene that we just saw looks so idyllic. And maybe it feels cozy because there is a brand new baby. Micah was born in December, all 10 pounds, 2 ounces of him. And even in the midst of packing and preparing for our move here, I also enjoyed the quiet coziness of snuggles and feedings around the clock. I have no doubt that Mary and Joseph and Jesus were surrounded with love and support. As the late New Testament scholar Ken Bailey has pointed out, in the culture of first century Palestine, hospitality was one of the highest virtues. There may not have been a guest room available for them, but they were welcomed into the very heart of the family home, and they were given all that they needed in those very vulnerable days before and after this miraculous birth. The scene was cozy, but in the larger context, all was not well. The story begins with a reference to the rule of Caesar Augustus. His father, Julius Caesar, was deified as the divine Julius on his deathbed, and so Caesar Augustus claimed the name Divi Filius, son of the god. The empire and the power of the state was growing, and for people like Mary and Joseph and the shepherds, that was not good news. 
Thousands upon thousands of people were crucified in those years. In mass crucifixions, many Jews were killed. It was brutal, and from that practice, we derive the word excruciating. And fans of Harry Potter may recognize the same root in the word cruciatus. Nothing was more brutal. It was in that context that Jesus, the true child of God, was born. Born in the most humble of circumstances, everything about this origin story stood in contrast to the powers that be. Born not into comfort or wealth or privilege, Jesus from the very beginning claimed God's solidarity with the oppressed and the rejected and the persecuted ones. Yes, Jesus' birth was for all of us, and it was especially for those in greatest need. That's why the shepherds were the very first invited to come and witness this miracle. While we gather in the coziness of this sanctuary or from the coziness of wherever you may be joining us from online, we know that there are others in our community and in the world who are facing very different circumstances. Ukrainians are celebrating their first Christmas or Hanukkah since the Russian invasion began, many without heat or power. And many in our own country are facing brutally cold weather without power as well. While we gather with family and loved ones, we know that too many people don't have that same love and support. Some have been shunned by their families of origin because of their gender identity or sexuality, and others have been caught in systems of abuse and addiction and mental illness. Some of us gather here tonight aware of our privilege, knowing that we should feel warm and full of joy, but the inside and the outside don't match. Invisible battles and struggles feel even more acute when they're in contrast with the joy and the merriment around us. The good news of Jesus' birth is this, that we are invited to abide in the love of God, that love that became flesh and bone and dwelt among us, Jesus came especially for those who don't find themselves cozy at the manger. He came to accompany the hurting and the lonely, the abused and the broken. In total solidarity, he took on all of those burdens and more in the course of his life and death. And we come to this place to worship at the manger but because so many are not able to make that trek, Jesus comes to us. That is the miracle of Christmas. God came into this world to accompany those most in need of hope, peace, joy, and love. And God comes to us in Jesus Christ wherever and whoever and however we are our hope, our comfort, and our salvation. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to all. Amen.